So to demo digital painting, I am going to use a person instead of an animal for this class section. I'm going to open up Photoshop. And I have collected some inspiration reference, both photo reference of my subject matter. This is the musician Nina Simone. I'm doing a portrait from the, the shoulders up. Most of Nina Simone's kind of publicity photos and things, uh, kind of mid-century, 20th century, are in black and white. But there are some in color, and I loved this fashion and patterns, you know, especially. So I want you to kind of identify a dominant reference that you might just take part of. But create a new file, and I'm going to make it 8 inches by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. So our, our lab minimum. But this first file is not going to be my digital painting. This first file is going to be my style sheet or my style board. And it's where I'm going to put all of my inspirations. Now I'm going to prioritize with my primary resource. And I'm going to put that up in the right hand corner right there. And then this one was actually an AI text generated freeware using crayon asking it to do Nina Simone as a Warhol painting in primary colors. And these are not primary colors but what it helps to do is like Andy Warhol did with his silk screens of celebrity portraits, kind of simplify the shapes and the distances that really help to capture the likeness of this individual. I also like to have secondary photo reference that shows a slightly different angle, slightly different lighting, because people are more than just one flat image. And you can use your compositing skills these are all different layers, and decide what aspects you want. So I don't want that much of her wardrobe. I just want her basically from the shoulders up, like so. So that's going to be my primary. And then this was Pedro Pascal done by Warhol, but I like some of those colors. So now these can be more stylistic. These are going to be a little bit smaller. I like the palette from some of these others. References, some of them also AI generated. Just using them for color. I thought you in the class, this was done with crayon. Might be impressed by this. This is using AI to generate anime. Right? And just kind of the complexity of the characters aren't great, and they're a little monstrous looking. But check out the food market. It's pretty impressive. And the signage in the background. That's not the style I'm going for, but lots of colors I can kind of steal from there. And then you can also have stylistic references that are not digital, right? So this is from oil painting, very heavily done and kind of textured and cut into with a palette knife. But I like some of the energy of that. Digital painting can be mixed with compositing with some interesting results too. So we might get into that by the end. And then this was my single favorite uh, AI-based reference, which just did a black and white charcoal portrait of Nina Simone. And like the, the Warhol one, did a good job of kind of blocking out aspects of likeness, though it looks a little cartoonish and distorted in its proportions, and her nose isn't that big and her lips aren't that big. It helps me to kind of see what I can play with, right, to get her kind of personality across. And then there are these other beautiful references I have. I'm just going to bring over one other, which is this contemporary painting example with scraping and just lots of abstract distortion. So I've got all of these things now. 
And what I'm going to do is simply save them as a JPEG. And this is going to be my Assignment 7 Digital Painting Style Sheet. And this is what I'm going to post as my photo reference for the work. I want to save it onto my computer. And I want to save it as a copy so that I can just flatten it into a JPEG. It's just saving onto the desktop. Okay, once I have that JPEG, I can close it. I don't need it as a Photoshop file. I have all the references that it comes from. I can put that into my Assignment 7 folder, but even though we have two more class periods to work on this and struggle to learn digital painting, or one more full class period before it's due, I can go ahead and acknowledge the deadline by putting this into Canvas right now. And that might help inspire others in the class to know that everyone's inspired by different, different types of work. Now you can also do an animal, you don't have to do a person. And in the afternoon section, I will be digitally painting an animal. Cat this semester. So I'm going to do a stylized digital painted portrait. And these are going to be my inspirations. If you only have one photo as your reference, then you are going to be limited to only what that one photo shows. Okay. And the more diverse your reference, the more avenues you might be reminded to explore with this process. This is going to be a very experimental process. So that's step one, and that's the first thing you need. You need to post your photo reference. And this is just called a style board or design board. Next, we're going to open that back up in Photoshop, just that JPEG. There's kind of two ways to set this up, but I'll show you the way I like using professional Photoshop. We're going to make Photoshop nice and big. I don't like to do the, the full screen because I don't like to lose these things at the top. But I, I make it large. Bless you. And then I'm going to say File New and open up a new Photoshop file that is 8 by 10. You know our standards. By 350. So 8 by 10 inches, not pixels. Make sure you change that to inches. By 350 pixels per inch. This will be large enough to print 11 by 14 at a print resolution. But if you're really ambitious with your digital painting and you want it to be higher resolution than this, this then instead of 8 by 10, you can make it like 11 by 14 by 350. And then you can print all the way up to 16 by 20 if you want it. Okay, now I am going to put them side by side within Photoshop. And I usually like to have my reference to the right because I'm right-handed. So I set up my tab so I have my blank new Photoshop file on the left and my style sheet on the right. And then how can I view both of them? I go to Window, Arrange, and I say Two Up Vertical. And I'll put them side by side. And that would have worked exactly right, except that I was highlighted on the wrong one. So let me show you how to do that again. <laughs> Open your style sheet in Photoshop. <coughs> then you open a new file in Photoshop. And I'm actually going to give it a name instead of just leaving it untitled. And this is Assignment 7. I'm doing a Nina Simone painting. And I want it 
8 inches by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. If you want to do it 10 by 8 to do something horizontal, you certainly can do that. Yep, I do. Thank you. That would take up more memory than I need. Okay, now I'm going to, well, let's just see how this works. Be selected on my blank one. I have them both open as tabs. Go to Window, Arrange, and say 2 Up Vertical. If I'm doing one that's horizontal, I would do 2 Up Horizontal. There we go. And it's going to put the one that you have visible showing on the left, and then your secondary image in Photoshop open on the right. I have my tablet plugged in. And I have my stylus in my hand. Now, to set up your digital painting, it doesn't have the same kind of rules that digital coloring does, like the sandwich. But it's still a good idea to lock your background layer. And I'm going to double click it, call it blank white. I want to leave that blank because I might replace the background with something else later. And then lock it and then build another layer on top. And this is what I'm going to call my speed sketch. So I'm going to paint this in two ways just really quickly for you so you can see how it gets set up. And if you remember, we downloaded this from Lynx. This is our, our handy digital painting and digital coloring guide. This was digital coloring. This is digital painting. So I can start with a loose line sketch, kind of like with charcoal or with pencil. Or I could start with just flat color. So I'll show you first with the line sketch. So to do that on a new layer, I am going to choose my tools. So I'm going to use black on white, just default. And I'm going to use a standard brush. This is just for quick sketching. I'm going to use the hard round pressure sized brush. And I'm going to set my size to be a little bit larger than I am comfortable with. Because when I press lightly, it's going to be nice and thin. And when I press hard, it's going to be full. That's why we use a tablet. We use it pressure sensitive. I want its opacity to not be quite 100. I want it to be around the 70s. And now I'm just going to sketch. So if I'm doing it like the demo, or like that handout, this thing, <laughs> then I'm going to sketch just kind of loosely looking at my photos that are to the right and try to make my composition. Why is this a good idea? Well, this makes it all my composition, you know, my hand. Instead of just tracing a photo directly. But there is a technique called rotoscoping where you can just trace on top of the photo. And I'm going to do kind of a combination of both just to show it to you. So this is not a portrait drawing class or a character design class, but those are classes I like teaching. And some of the rules of portrait drawing are that the top of the skull to the bottom of the jaw, that is one head height. You will find the eyes halfway from the top of the skull to the bottom of the jaw. That's when the person has teeth. If the person doesn't have teeth, it can be a little different. So the eyes are often lower than you think. And then the eyes are have one eye width between them. So you can see her eye starts there, ends there. You can look at the wide of the eye, even though her makeup is made to make them look larger. But the wide of the eyeball, that is one distance in between. And then it's actually another eye distance to the side of the head. So adult heads are five eyes wide at the midpoint. Then the nose ends, actually tucks back to the head halfway between the eye line and the chin line, or the bottom of the mandible. So that's another halfway, right there, to the nose line. Nose, the eyes, one eye width between the eyes. And you'll notice that the nose is exactly as wide as the eyes are wide. So you can draw a little box down from the center of your eye line to that nose line to get where the nose happens. 
though noses are very different shapes, her, her nose is slightly 